Hello, my name is Jeremy Blum and today we have a tutorial for ultimatecomputers.net. We're going to be showing you how to both remove thermal paste from a heatsink and how to reapply it to a CPU and heatsink for your computer. For this project, we need a couple of items. First off, uh, lint-free cloths, which you can get from most office supply stores. They're often used for cleaning computer screens. The heatsink and the CPU that you're attaching together with thermal paste. The thermal paste itself, in this case we're using Tunic TX3 and 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol, which you can get from most pharmacies. The first thing I'm going to be doing today is removing existing thermal paste from this Dark Knight CPU cooler. Because we've used a CPU cooler on a previous CPU, I have to remove the thermal paste first before attaching it to a new CPU. First thing I'm going to do is going to take my lint-free cloth and fold it up a couple times so that we get a good amount of thickness here. Then we'll take the isopropyl rubbing alcohol, cover the lid with it, and turn it over to slightly saturate the uh, rag. Apply several strokes in the same direction, applying light pressure to uh, remove the thermal compound. You can have to do this several layers at a time, and on a heat sink such as this one with integrated thermal pipes, it's going to be a little bit more difficult just because you're going to have those crevices to get into. If you leave a little bit in the crevices, it's not the end of the world, uh, but you should try to get as much of it off as you can. You want to have a pretty shiny finish before you reapply it to a new CPU. Now we're basically going to keep doing the same thing a couple more times. We've gotten a fair amount off already. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold the rag over in another way so that we can use a clean area of it to keep going. And I'll apply more isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Once you're done cleaning off all the thermal paste, just make sure that you have a nice shiny finish like it was the first time you used it. And uh, keep in mind that you should check to make sure you didn't leave any residue on it from your cloth. And then give it a few minutes, maybe five minutes, to ensure that all the isopropyl alcohol evaporates off before you actually apply it to your CPU. You would then follow the same procedure for your CPU to remove any excess thermal paste that you have on your CPU. Since I'm using a new CPU, I obviously don't need to do that. Before you apply thermal compound to the CPU, you should put it into the motherboard socket. In this case, I'm using an LGA 1366 EVGA classified motherboard with an Intel Core i7 930 CPU. With AMD, it's pretty similar. You just have to open the latch a little bit differently. We're going to start by opening up the CPU latch. Remove the cover. Most motherboards come with this little plastic protective cover for the pins. Make sure you move that out of the way first. But hold on to it. In the event that you have to send your motherboard back, they usually require that you reapply this. Next up, drop your CPU into the socket very carefully, ensuring to line up the tabs. It should just drop in, no force should be required. Put the cover down and latch it in place. Before you apply thermal paste to the CPU, be sure to attach the back plate to the motherboard if you are using an aftermarket CPU cooler that requires one. In a previous video tutorial, I showed myself applying thermal compound in a dab and then spreading it with a credit card. While this works, the method that I'm about to show you tends to result in temperatures that are a little bit lower, so you should probably follow this instead. Start by uh, taking your thermal compound and basically just squeezing a dab of it right into the middle of the CPU, like so. There's no exact quantity that you should be aiming for here but about a pea-sized dab is usually what people go for. Make sure you get it all on there and just leave it in the middle. Don't spread it out. Now instead of spreading it around by hand, we're going to apply the heat sink to it and use the heat sink to actually move the thermal paste to where it needs to go. This will create a little bit less air bubbles than the previously described method. Some people like to spin it around a little bit to help move the thermal paste around. What you do is up to you, but what will really do it is when you put the screws in and pull the heat sink down which will help disperse the thermal paste. And that's it, just screw the heat sink in and your thermal paste will be applied as needed.